What's up guys? Welcome back to another dividend portfolio update video. If you're new here on this channel, I do weekly update videos going over my dividend portfolio after my weekly deposits. Today I got some big news. So let's see what I did this week. Let's jump right into it. All right, jumping over to the portfolio. You can see we're up to another new all time high, $26,000 guys. Let's go. The chart is starting to take off looking phenomenal. We're up $650, 3.36%. And I got some big news this week, guys. So we're just going to jump right on into it. We sold the stock. Yeah, we did. And we bought another one. Let's see if you can guess what it is. Here it is. First off, we received $3.89 from Realty Income in the form of a dividend. And then two days ago, we made one big buy and one big sell. We completely sold out of our AT&T position, all $899 that was left and we put it all into Whirlpool, WHR. I've been wanting to add Whirlpool now for a little while, and AT&T has literally been underperforming terribly since I bought it. It's now reached a 29-year low. It's been going down almost 16, somewhere between 16 and 20% since I bought it in January. That was already three years of dividends right there, so I'm good. AT&T, I'm good. Whirlpool, load me up. And that brings us to this week's $750 deposit. That plus the money left over, we had $771.64 to invest across 22 stocks. That means we added everything but three stocks. We put 5064 in the Clorox company, 6020 in Verizon, 2969 in Texas Instruments, 2689 in Colgate, 3787 in McDonald's, 3238 in Procter & Gamble, $6.81 in Union Pacific. We put 3372 in SPHD. 1833 in Home Depot, 2312 in Pepsi, 2413 in SCHD, we put 1884 in Air Products, 1410 in Johnson & Johnson, 997 in Realty Income, 3497 in Altria, $156.98 to get that back up to weight in our Whirlpool. We put 3583 in Target, 941 in Coke, 4301 in Kimberly Clark. 4259 in Merkin Co., 2755 in Walgreens, and the last 3461 went to General Mills, guys. That is $770 right there spent in one week across 22 buys. Let's get this portfolio going. If we want to look through the charts real quick, we can see one day just a straight up line. One week, good cup there. Oh, there's there's the beauty. And that's what we're really talking about. One quarter. Guys, get on the dividend train. Now let's jump over to the dividend tracker. With the dividend tracker, you can see this week something that's the same. And this brings me back to the AT&T and the Whirlpool change. So you can see we're now at $921.24 in annual income, but that's after the $750 deposit this week. So let me explain. When I replaced AT&T with Whirlpool, it brought my portfolio yield down from 3.76% to 3.63% which seems like a pretty big move. Even though only 1 25th of my portfolio changed and it only changed 3%, that brought my entire portfolio yield down 0.1244%, which doesn't seem like much until you see that last week I had $921.99 in annual dividend income. And after selling tea for Whirlpool, my annual dividend income dropped to $890. After this week's $750 deposit, it brought me back up to $921.24. How crazy is that? Almost the same exact amount. So in other words, I had to invest $750 across my entire portfolio just to make up the difference in annual income from selling my AT&T stock for a Whirlpool and the yield difference. Some other quick stats. AT&T's yield was 7.61%, Whirlpool is 4.48%, so a little bit lower. But AT&T's payout ratio was 87.4%, Whirlpool's is 19.1%. Huge difference. AT&T's 10-year growth CAGR was negative 1.95%. Whirlpool's 10-year growth CAGR was 12.66%. AT&T's chart has gone only down for about 30 years. Whirlpool, his chart has gone up since existence. It's on a good buying opportunity right now, in my opinion. AT&T is communication services. Whirlpool is consumer discretionary. Both of the stocks are dividend aristocrats. So that's a lot of the information I factored in when switching over from AT&T to Whirlpool. We're now expected 59.44 in July. We have a 3.76% yield on cost, but a 3.6% dividend yield. If we scroll down and look at our new diversification, we've got 35.66 in consumer defensive, 4% in real estate, 4% in industrials, 4% communication services, 4% basic materials, 
4.4% financial services, 7.9% in miscellaneous, 8.8% in technology, 12% of our portfolios in consumer cyclical, and the last 15.78% is in healthcare. I love the diversification. Jumping down to our annual income, let's see where Whirlpool is. It's our fifth highest producer still, so that's pretty good. It's bringing in $47.73 a year. It's my first time seeing where it falls in line, and I'm very happy with that. AT&T was, I think, first or second, but you know, when you're losing three times the dividend in six months, you got to get out of here. You're a trap. You're, you're no good, and I don't think anybody should invest in it. Now, watch it go up from here ever since I got out of it, but oh well. Just a quick scroll through all my income if you guys just wanted to check it out. McDonald's still the lowest at $21, and Altria still the highest at $84. And we have everything in between and every yield in between. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was a really big move that I did in my dividend portfolio. I hope you guys enjoy the transparency. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And until next week, y'all take it easy. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.